Hey everybody, we're going to be doing another how to ride a motorcycle video and we're going to be taking the Suzuki Katana 600 and I think what we'll talk about today is how to ride on the street, stopping, going, shifting and then we're actually going to take it in first person mode. I'm going to put the camera in the helmet. We're going to take it on the freeway so that should be fun and then we'll talk about freeway riding and counter steering. Now, what we'll do before we start the motorcycle, spend about a minute or so uh, going around the motorcycle, pointing some things out. And uh, for those of you that have never ridden before, what you'll find is on the Japanese motorcycles, traditionally everything on the right side, let's say you're sitting on the motorcycle, that'd be your right, is braking. This is the front brake. As you guys know, you squeeze the lever back here and uh, you brake. We'll talk to you about that. Here's the uh, oil level. Notice it says full and low. So when the bike is steady, uh, when the bike's, I should say, standing up straight, steady, the oil should always be right between there. You don't want to overfill it and you don't want to have it below there. The way you change the oil on this is you undo this part right here and then you can, uh, uh, I should say, add oil. The way you add oil is you unscrew this part right here and then you're able to add oil this is this is protected so if your bikes parked let's say on the street or if you go to dinner or something uh, the pestering kids <laughs> can't go ahead and put stuff in your oil unless of course they have one of those wrenches but um, so that's why that's like that now this is the rear brake your foot uh, goes like this see and then you just push down with your toe area here to brake. Now, it has the uh, wonderful D&D &D exhaust made in America, Fort Worth, uh, Texas. So I'll be, hopefully I remember to rev it up a few times for you guys. I know people always do those videos where they rev it. Now what we're going to do is let's mosey on around the other side and um, we'll show you some stuff. Now over here traditionally on most uh, Japanese motorcycles is shifting. Now this is the clutch lever and I always tell people, you know how when you're in a uh, car that is a manual stick shift car, you put your left foot in on the clutch and then you shift with your right hand, right? At least in America because we drive, our, our uh, drivers are on the left side of the car, right? <laughs> well. What you do here is similar in a way is you pull the clutch lever in similar to like you're putting your left foot in on the clutch and while the clutch lever is still held in you shift down here. So similar to a stick shift car how you shift with your right hand here you're shifting here with your toe. So my left just pretend this is my left foot here. My left foot will be like this on top as I'm kicking downward shifting downward. When I want to shift upward, notice I shift my toe underneath and I kick up like this. And I can shift one, two, three, four like that. Now, what happens with this shifting here? This is the thing that confused me before I started riding because I had ridden in uh, stick shift 5.0 Mustangs. I had stick shift cars, but I was like, well, how do you shift on a motorcycle? You know, it kind of, I couldn't figure out how could they do it because there's no lever. It's like on the foot. So the way you, the best way to explain it is imagine there's a ladder. You know how you have rungs in the ladder going upward? First rung on the bottom. And then of course, let's say there's six rungs. The six rung is on the top and in between is two through five, right? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Well, what you're doing here is if you kick up, you're now uh, going up the ladder. So let's say you're at the first rung, right? And you want to go to second gear. You kick up to the second rung of the ladder and you're in second. Then you kick up again and you're in third. Then you kick up again and you're in fourth. And then let's say you are coming to a stop, which we're going to show you when we go out on the streets here. You kick downward and you go three, two, one like that. So you're always shifting up and down the ladder. So once you got that, it's pretty much easy. Now on this bike, it has a couple of different uh, areas here where you can turn this lever to. For example, notice it's the fuel is on. But let's say I'm starting to run low on gas. 
while I'm riding, I could shift, uh, uh, shift, I could turn this, I could kind of shift it uh, clockwise here and, it, and go to reserve and it will tap into the extra gas at the bottom of the tank. Now, we have here the fuel gauge, which is interesting because most of the motorcycles I've ridden have not had a fuel gauge, so this is kind of cool to have a fuel gauge. Usually they just have like a little light that comes on when you're running kind of low. But this got a little fuel gauge, so it's kind of cool, little clock. Um, this is the tachometer, so you're going to see as I'm shifting up and down and as we're increasing speed, the tack starts going up and down on the tack. And then, of course, the speedometer. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the camera in the helmet. We're going to start the motorcycle in a second, but I want to show you something. You have the turn signals here. See the little arrows? If you want to turn left, you go like that, and you want to turn right, you go like that. And then when you're done making the turn, you push in right here, like on this button, and that cancels it out. It's on low beam lights. The lights are always on on this motorcycle. And then, sort of like cars, how you have uh, daytime driving lights, these are the brights. If I want to turn the brights on, I click here. This little trigger, I can pull this trigger if I need to pass someone and shine the brights on to get their attention, saying, hey, look, I'm passing, don't kill me. <laughs> You got the kill switch here. This stops all the uh, electrical on it so that it, the motorcycle powers off. Hazard lights here. And I forgot over here you got the horn. Beep, beep, sounds like Roadrunner. Maybe we'll honk the horn. Here's the starter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key. I have to hold the clutch lever back for safety purposes. It makes you hold the clutch lever back. Then I'm going to start it and then I release the clutch lever it'll only start really uh, in neutral for safety so let's get on it and um you're gonna get a little bit of fog okay guys so just for a few seconds till i start all right so when you go to start the motorcycle it's good to have it straight up like this so we started it you know it gets real cold um at night time and I'm going to be riding at night, so right now it's not cold. It's like 73 degrees out. It's hot. I have a, um, see the LA right here? I have a LA jacket on that my mom got me uh, for Christmas because it keeps me really warm. Plus I have motorcycle gear underneath this. Plus I got my motorcycle pants on. Plus I have a shirt on that's really keeps me warm. So I'm hot. <laughs> but I dress this way because uh, at nighttime I get cold. But once I start going, even right now it'll be pretty cool so it's just that I'm stopped here so let's go ahead I want to show you something let's walk around here and um, we'll give it a few revs hopefully it doesn't go into gear and shoot out and hit the tree although that would make for a good YouTube video so we got the D&D exhaust I love this thing um, I've noticed uh, maybe we can talk about that I've noticed that people do notice me more um, I know there's a big debate in the motorcycle realm, do loud pipes save lives? I would say they help, not as much as people would think, but I do think that they help a little. I'm willing to admit that. I've never had a loud pipe really on a motorcycle. Well, when I had a Gixxer, um, that was pretty loud. But when you're on the freeway, it does help because if you're right around people, and as long as they don't have their radio on and stuff, um, they'll hear you and of course this tends to be a louder pipe when I'm going so let's give it a few revs now let's get on and we're gonna go ahead and show you what to do when you're a new rider first thing you want to do put the kickstand up second thing you want to do is you want to learn how to go into gear and how to go out of gear how to get into gear and how to go out of gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the clutch lever back. We're going to go into gear and we're going to slowly release the clutch lever. And what I want you guys to do is watch the lines right here on the left side. See the paint? And watch how I slowly let the motorcycle inch forward. And um, you want to get used to that. It's called getting to know the friction zone. There's a part where the motorcycle engages into gear and it starts going. So watch, we have the clutch in, doesn't do anything. I'm going to kick down, remember the ladder, I'm all the way down on the first rung of the ladder. As I slowly, I don't know if you can see, I'm slowly releasing the clutch, not all the way, but see how I'm inching forward? Then I'm going to pull the clutch back. 
See that? Obviously you keep both, <laughs> both of your feet on the ground, that goes without saying. So do that a few times. Now once you've done that at like 20 times, keep the clutch lever in. And now what you're going to do is as soon as, and keep your feet kind of down, but get ready to put them up on the pegs. As soon as you start feeling the motorcycle going, give it a little bit of throttle. Don't give it throttle like I just did. I'm showing you the exhaust. <laughs> just a little. And we're going to go to the right over here. So we give it a little bit of throttle. Then keep releasing the clutch. And now look, the clutch is out. We're in first gear, see? Believe it or not, if you can get first gear, you're cool with it. If you can get first gear, you're pretty much cool with it. Now, second gear is a little easier. We're going to go up to second gear. Get a little bit more speed, clutch in, second gear. Now watch this. If I pull the clutch in and I slightly tap down, see the neutral light go on here? I'm in neutral. So then once you kind of rid around the parking lot a bit, we're going to go out into the street. And then we're going to get on the freeway, right? Now watch. Coming up to a light, a stop sign I should say, pull the clutch in. Notice I'm now braking. What I'm doing is I'm holding, notice my foot's down, so I'm not using the rear brake. I'm holding the front brake here. I got a car behind me, so I'm going to have to go a little bit quicker. Give it a little bit of gas as I'm letting the clutch out. Now we'll go down the street and we'll get on the freeway. So let's approach this light. Notice I'm in first, second. Let's get up front here. Now what I do too is I pull the clutch lever and I slightly kick down. It's in neutral. Once you see that neutral light, notice I don't even got to hold the clutch anymore. So I can just kind of relax. I don't even have the brake on. Um, I just have my feet down and I'm relaxing, right? But you see the light here, how it's green on the other side of the cross traffic. If you're going to be in neutral, please take my advice. See how it's now it's yellow? Put it in gear. You have to be ready for the light because if you're at the front of the traffic light and you're not in gear, you're going to get rear-ended. Now you go up to second. Now watch, I'm going to, I'm in second. I'm going to pull the clutch lever in. You listen to the motorcycle clutch lever in third. Everyone always says, when do you shift? Well, you listen to the motorcycle and watch the tack. Those two things will tell you when to shift. You notice I'm only at 3,500 RPMs, so that's pretty cool. I don't want it to drop below three grand. And it starts bogging down, so I would downshift. So notice we're coming up to a stop sign. What do I do? See how it's right below 3,000? Downshift doesn't really harm the engine. Downshift again, and now I'm in neutral, and I'm stopping. Now. I could stop here for a moment. When you go ahead and you brake, it's like squeezing an orange. I was told that at MSF class, and it's really true. You squeeze the brake like that. You don't just pull back on the brake real hard. You squeeze it. I better go because this person's here. First gear, clutch lever and kick up. Second gear, so here's how it is. Pay attention because everyone always asks this. I know that sounded mean the way I said it. I didn't mean it. I love you guys. <laughs> But everyone always says, well, do I hold the clutch lever in? And they're, no, listen to me, what I'm going to tell you. Okay, so here's what you do. When you're going to shift, you pull the clutch lever in. You keep the clutch lever in till you've shifted into gear down here. Then you release the clutch lever. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we got it, class? So now watch. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to downshift. Watch. Clutch lever in, downshift a second, release slowly. See how I did that? I'm braking. Clutch lever in. I downshifted to neutral, now I'm into first. Here we go. Slowly letting the clutch lever out. We're going to get on the freeway. Clutch lever in, kick up to second, then release the clutch. See how it is? Okay, watch. Clutch lever in, kick up to third, then release the clutch. See how it is? Just like a car. If you can drive a stick shift car, you'll be able to ride a motorcycle, no problem. We're in third gear. What? Clutch lever in, kick up to fourth. Now, <coughs> you're approaching a, um, <coughs> excuse me, a stop sign right here. See the sign? What gear am I in? Fourth, right? There's the stop sign. Watch. Clutch lever in, kick down to third. 
See how I'm coming to a stop? I'm also braking. Clutch lever in, kick down to second. Clutch lever in, I'll kick all the way down to first here. And here we go. Slowly release the clutch while giving it throttle. First is the hardest, really. It's not hard, but compared to the other one. Clutch lever in, kick up to second. Now let's speed it up a bit. Let's get on the freeway. We're in second gear. Clutch lever in, kick up to third. Clutch lever in, kick up to fourth. Now this motorcycle red lines around 11 grand. So as I'm getting on the freeway, as long as there's no one in front of me, we'll kind of let it ride high on the tack so you can see the get up and go of it. Now watch, clutch lever in, kick down. Clutch lever in, kick down, and clutch lever in. I'm in neutral, I'm still balancing, haven't put my foot down, haven't put my foot down. See how I'm still balancing? Clutch lever in, kick down to first. Still the foot's not down. Clutch lever in, kick up to second. And you guys are riding on the street. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Clutch lever in, kick up to third. Baskin Robbins. I love that place. Now what gear are we in third? Look at the tag. Clutch lever in, kick up again. Oh, now you get the red light. So we're in fourth. Clutch lever in, kick down to third. Clutch lever in, kick down to second. Yes, you do a lot of shifting on a motorcycle, but it's your foot doing it so you don't get tired. Now I'm gonna shift down to first since I'm practically at a stop. And the light should turn green any second. There it is. Letting the clutch out slowly. And here's our freeway. Clutch lever in, kick up to second. I'm gonna be showing you guys counter steering also. We'll talk about that. Clutch lever in, kick up to third. Oh, my nose itches. Clutch lever in, kick up to fourth. Okay, so let's just kind of, you get the idea so we don't have to mope along here all slow. So I'm in fourth gear. I'm going to see if I could take this on-ramp at fourth gear. Now well, let's downshift so I can get some uh, speed here. No, so notice we're not really braking here. Watch for grapple. We're in third gear. Now we're going to get on it here. Watch the tack in the middle. What gear are we in, guys? You got it, third. Clutch lever in, kick up to fourth. Make sure people don't squish you. Clutch lever in, kick up to fifth. Does everything a lot more compressed and accelerated on the freeway. Now what gear are we in? Fifth. Clutch lever in, kick up to six. Now this bike has six gear. So we're now in the top gear and we're at about 6,500 RPMs. Now you hear the motor. Um, this is why I was saying I do think that pipe, loud pipes save lives. So now that you're on the freeway, you just enjoy the ride. We have our um, on-ramp coming up here on the right. So I'm going to talk to you until we get there about uh, what I think is really awesome about riding a motorcycle. But um, you notice once you're in sixth gear, you just kind of go with the flow. Now, what I think is really great about motorcycles is, hold on. Oh, motorcycle, oh, motorcycle. How do I love these? Let me count the ways. I can talk for hours about what's really uh, awesome about motorcycle riding. Let's get over here. California, one of the things that's awesome is they let you ride in this lane. And really, to ride in this lane where there's no traffic, you either have to be in a hybrid vehicle or you have to have two or more people in your vehicle or a motorcycle. But um, I don't really have an MP3 player or anything I listen to when I'm on the motorcycle. I'm able to uh, actually think without the interruptions of television, the radio, cell phone, it's good that you break away from the interruptions of the days 
that try to brainwash us <laughs> and you're just able to gather your thoughts and think there's something really uh, unique about it just to be able to be on a uh, long ride just you and the machine being able to gather your thoughts of what's going on during your life and during that week and to actually think Now we have our on-ramp coming up here, um, so um, my allergies are messing up, so if I start sniffling, that's what it is. Let's talk about motorcycle gear, some things that I think you must have if you want to make your ride more enjoyable. Um, first of all, I see some people with like leather gloves they don't have any protection around the fingers or anything like that I would get some protection around your fingers because you can ride for like a year and you won't have anything hitting your hands or any debris but it only takes once and every time you go out riding it's like Russian roulette you're one step closer to something happening every single day you go out riding you've now increased your odds that something bad is going to hit you. And it happened to me. I've been riding for years and years, never crashed, never had an accident, extremely safe rider. I don't do stupid stuff and, you know, put other people's lives on the freeway at risk or anything like that. But even with that, um, what happened to me, and it was on this freeway, but coming the other way on the other side, I'm riding, right? And I'm going about 65 miles per hour, which is the speed limit. And there's a vehicle, I and mean, we're only going like about, it says 60 right now. But um, there was a vehicle in the right lane and something, the vehicle ran over something, either a piece of metal or something. I don't know what it was. And it sprung back like a slingshot and it launched right here towards my right hand. When it did that, it broke the um, the the lever right here, this lever, and it crushed uh, my finger. And my finger, see how there's these little things on my finger, like these uh, protection things? It was with these gloves right here. But the same brand gloves, but not this, the, I have um, black gloves. These are red, these are newer. Because what happened when it hit my hand, and by the way, here's our, the freeway I was going to show you uh, counter steering okay what counter steering is I'll get back to the gloves is I'm going to pull back towards me with this handlebar and push forward this way that's going to lean the motorcycle into the corner let's get some speed now I wanted to get some distance so great I can show you watch this that will lean it over here to the right so I'm going to pull this way towards me and push forward this way watch there it goes that's counter steering. I'm pulling back on this left handlebar here. So when you're going at higher speeds like that, I know this sounds weird if you've never ridden a motorcycle, you're actually going to turn the opposite way that you want to go. And you notice it wasn't really a turn as much as it was pressure. So I just made a right corner, right? You guys saw that? What did I do? What I did is this handlebar here moves towards my rib cage. This handlebar here moves outward. Now it didn't move a lot, maybe half an inch, but just by leaning and applying that pressure, they shouldn't really call it counter steering, by the way, just my opinion. They should call it counter pressure because you're not really steering, you're just applying pressure. Now we got another one coming up here that's going to the left. So this is the opposite way we want to go. The opposite way we just did, I should say. And what am I what am I going to do if I'm going to the left? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm hold on a second. Let me get over here. If I want to go to the left, this hand's coming back towards my rib cage. It's the complete opposite of what we just did. 
and then this one's going to move forward ahead of me. So I'm basically kind of turning it to the right, and that'll make the motorcycle lean to the left, and I'll go through the corner. So let's get some distance, I get some speed. But back to my glove story. So this piece of metal hit so hard that it busted the um, hand lever off. Not on this bike, I was on another bike. And it hit my finger, and I swore, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I gotta have a broken finger, it hurts so bad. But um, I, it was just all swollen and everything, and it got swollen so much it was like the Incredible Hulk. It ripped my pinky finger open. And everyone's getting in front of me, so I hope I can show this to you. Okay, here we go. I'll be able to. All right, so here we go. What are we going to do? We're going left, right? So I'm going to push forward here ahead of us, and I'm going to pull back here on the right. No! Oh! Come on, get out of the way so I can show people this. Alright, here we go. Got another motorcycle rider down there, see him? All the way to the left lane. I never get on a motorcycle unless I have on the full armor, if you know what I mean. On a motorcycle, you are one breath away from death. So you're like one breath away from death. So, they say you want to be geared up so well that if you just jumped off the motorcycle going 80, you would survive. Now, what type of motorcycle should you get? Well, I'm on a 600. It doesn't really have, like, scary power to it. I like the 600 motorcycle, unless you're getting, like, an R6, which does have mucho, mucho scary power, eye-dropping power. like a Suzuki Katana 600, which is what I'm on. Good stuff. Um, I've ridden on these freeways before with like a Ninja 250, which you can ride with a Ninja 250, but if you ride freeways like this where they're wide open, deserted areas, without a lot of traffic, you're going to want something with some meat on its bones. And let's see if we catch up to this dude. See what my brother from another mother is riding. We're all brothers in the motorcycle world. Brothers and sisters, I know a lot of ladies are riding now. Also, um, I wear these sponge earplugs because what happens, the, the noise here is so loud. Look at this guy's on a sport bike. The noise is so loud that you will go deep. You will go a little deep. You're gonna go deaf if you don't have good ear protection. Walmart and any uh, sporting goods store, hey, we're catching up. They have these earplugs and they just lower the volume just a bit. Let's see what my brother from another mother is riding here. Pretty cool guy, he always lets me over. He's on a Honda CBR. Very quiet bike too. I do, brother. He knows I'm filming. He's on a 929, that's a big motor. Man, my allergies are uh, 
acting up. You know, my sister always says, she goes, why do motorcycle riders always have messed up shoes? Well, that guy doesn't have messed up shoes, and I don't. <laughs> but you ever notice a lot of motorcycle riders, they always have these messed up shoes because they're always putting the feet on the ground. They're always setting them down in oil. Give us motorcycle riders a break. See those white things, the frame sliders right there in front of his knee? That's, I got those too, see, but mine are black. In case he and I crash, um, it doesn't really ruin the fairings as much. That's at least the plan. Once this uh, lane opens up, I'll get in the, uh, the right lane here. There he goes. So, um, 600's fine. This guy's off. Look at him. Get great gas mileage. It's a lot of fun. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this motorcycle video. Much as I enjoy making them for you. Look at him. He's off like a bat out of hell. Ride safe, my brother. Ride safe. So what do we cover, guys? We cover counter steering, shifting, braking. Look at him way up there. He's right there at the top of that crest of the hill going up. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, that was him. There's another motorcycle rider here. Let's see what this dude's riding. This guy's like on a Harley Davidson type motorcycle. Here we go. I think, yeah. So if you guys don't like these sport bikes, then well, you got these types of bikes here. You just gave me the peace sign, see how they do that? Now, this guy has an open face helmet. You see that? He's braver than I am. See how his face is showing? I mean, one little gnat hits you and it ruins your whole day. Peace, brother. I gotta go because there's people behind us. There he goes, like a dot in my mirror. Of course, this motorcycle is probably worth 50 times. In all reality, is it probably worth like five times mine? You can get these katanas so cheap, like just to kind of. I'm on a Suzuki katana. Um, look for a Suzuki katana, and you can get them so cheap, and they they just these darn things run forever. Because you know how the Volkswagen was made, like the Volkswagen Super Beetle was made it doesn't have like a radiator it's not liquid cooled it's like air cooled yeah so what happens is if you if you um, these cars they'll lose their motor if the cooling system fails right this bike's not even liquid cooled the one i'm on it's just air cooled and it's got a oil cooler You can get these puppies out here in California, which they're more expensive out here in California, like $2,000. If you don't care how it looks, you get some that are kind of scratched up, messed up, just so you kind of learn how to ride for like a, a thousand bucks. Twelve hundred bucks. Well guys, I'm going to end the video. It's nice uh, riding with you, or glad you were riding with me. Hope you guys have a great week. I know Christmas is coming up, the best holiday ever in the history of the world. So, I'm making this video in December 2012. I want to wish you guys, want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Who knows, maybe uh, your Christmas present this year will be a motorcycle. Even if you got to buy it for yourself. <laughs> that would be a great gift. Have a great week.